So let's go through today how to set up our IDE that we're going to be using for uh, the Ludus application. It's going to be using Ruby and Rails, which are actually two different components, if you were not aware of that. To get both Ruby and Rails in there, we're going to be using some other third-party services like Homebrew. It's a, uh, a package management system that will let us install Ruby and MySQL and a few other things locally on our machine. It's kind of like the halfway between compiling by source and using MAMP for instance, on uh, OS X. So first up, I'm gonna install git. Download and install, super simple, very straightforward. Done, super standard. Next, pop open terminal. We need to install uh, homebrew and a few other things, but let's go ahead and actually follow a guide about installing Ruby on Rails with OS 10.10. .10. Installing Ruby and Rails for your application is pretty much the hardest part of setting that up. In our case, we're gonna run it all through Homebrew to kind of help take some of the burden off. So let's go ahead and run the first command here. Install those developer tools. Now a key thing here is I'm currently using 10.10 .10. that is needed when following 10.10 .10 directions. There will be different instructions for each different version, unfortunately. They will only differ very, very slightly, but in significant ways. And we're good, fully installed, nice. But if we rerun that command, now it'll do its thing. And this is because the first time through you need to install the Xcode developer tools which we took the time out to do, and we're just rerunning that first command, where it's going to go out, reach out, and curl. Uh, curling is a way to uh, download from a direct connection. You can actually curl direct web pages, you can curl files, you can curl all sorts of things. And for what it's worth, uh, another program besides curl that's out there is called wget, also a good one. All right, homebrew is now installed. First up, we need to run brew doctor. We are good for our next command. Brew install. All right, up and running, nice. Next up, we need to run this command. Essentially what's happening is there's a, a file called bash profile, and that's kind of what runs terminal in a uh, very basic sense of things and we're just setting up these different elements installing Ruby 2.1.5 using rbenv Ruby environment so rbenv is kind of a it's kind of a switcher where it allows you to install different ver uh, different versions of Ruby so that you can toggle between them should you need to. So later when we, uh, like later being let's say next year, when there's a new version of Ruby out, we can just plug it in. We don't have to reinstall the entire system. You just plug it in and then toggle over to it. The idea there is that you don't want to have to upgrade your project code as you upgrade different versions of Ruby. It'd be kind of like developing something on PHP 3 and then just changing to PHP 5 and hoping that everything works. And while that's downloading, I'm going to go get some sushi. Sushi done. We now have that Ruby environment installed. Now we need to uh, set it as what we're going to use globally. Uh, so from here, I can say Ruby V and it's gonna tell us that we're specifically using 2.1.5, and that's uh, Ruby. So let's get Rails in there now. Ah, the best way to look at this, so Homebrew is a package management system. It allows you to install other things. Uh, Ruby has a gem package management system to install Ruby things. Uh, so one of those Ruby things that we're gonna install is Rails, so we're gonna gem install Rails. And that's where this next command comes. It's gonna take its time, do its thing, download, and this will take a few.
All right, we are all installed. So after the installation of rails, we need to kind of rebuild the environment. Think of it as uh, restarting the environment of sorts. Uh, we're gonna rehash with RBM. That's simple. Rails dash V will tell us that no rails is there. So that's not good. Rails is still not there. Can do that. Rails V, and we are good. Was I doing Rails V before? Ah, son of a. <laughs> I was doing Rail V the whole time, so. Didn't even need to, re need to restart terminal, maybe. Who knows? Move forward. We have git installed. These are some configuration variables that we're gonna be setting up. And these, this is mostly like metadata that's gonna be added to the git logs, or each git commit, so like you'll You'll have your your name, if you spell it right, added to everything that you do in here. And then we need to generate an SSH key. So this SSH key allows us to uh, handshake with other computers. Uh, it's kind of like having a secret handshake. First up, it's gonna ask where you want to save this file to. Pressing enter says, saves it to the default location, which is your user folder slash the hidden folder of .ssh, followed by the name idrsa, which is totally fine. So here up, you wanna add a password to the file, and you're gonna to have to really remember this password for a long time. All right, so cat uh, will concatenate and display just uh, that file for us, the contents of the file. If we were to, uh, instead of cat, for instance, uh, nano that file. Now we're editing the file, and hey, it's the exact same thing as before. But we don't want to do any of that. Uh, we want to take this and share this with GitHub. So next up, I'm heading to GitHub. Hopefully you do have a GitHub account. If not, you really should get on that. And under settings and SSH keys, you can add a new SSH key, which is the, the handshake. Handshake is kind of the, the wrong way to say that because handshaking is a completely different thing with uh, protocols. A fingerprint, maybe. That's a better way to look at it and I'll just add the key in there. So basically these are just the different computers that can access my GitHub repo. These computers have authorization for it. So with that done and in place, we need to install MySQL. Gotta have a database. Uh, MySQL. We're gonna have to try that out. All right, so it's loaded. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the final steps because I don't really care about Postgres right now. Let's head over to my project box folder. And inside of here, I've got DWP. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new app and we're gonna call it Rails. So if I look at this brand new machines folders here, I've got the, my project box. I'm inside DWP, only videos there. Uh, Whatever you name your application, when you're doing uh, the Rails new, it will create that folder to uh, stuff everything into. So I'm gonna start off, and uh, we're gonna be making a demo app for this, kind of getting started. It's a throwaway app, uh, just to, to get the feet wet before we start tackling our actual application. So for the throwaway app, we're just gonna make a little simple uh, cheat sheet organizer. I know that I have lots of uh, pieces of code that I, I use often, and some that I need to remember for very long periods of time. During that time, I use it with low frequency. So I kind of want to make a cheat sheet of some of the uh, the pieces of code that I use, like for Rails or for, for any other language, really. So we're gonna, we're gonna build that. So what are we gonna call it? Uh, let's say Rails new cheat codes. Cheat codes, that sounds good. Cheat codes as in plural. Ah, I messed up. Cancel, doesn't matter. Uh, Control C cancels. Uh, I'm gonna remove recursively for forcefully and verbosely cheat codes. All right, so clear, try again. Do the exact same thing. But this time I'm gonna specify a database of my SQL so we can actually use a database. Uh, nope, I did that wrong. There we go, database MySQL. 
create all those things. So it just creates these uh, static files really quick to do, but then it runs the bundle install. The bundle install is going to go and download all the gems. So much like installing Rails for the very first time, uh, it's a lot of gems, not as many. It's a subset of those gems. So usually just a minute, a minute or two, depending on how fast your computer is, how fast your internet connection is. All right, up and running. So that looks good. Let us change our directory into cheat codes, do a Rails server to uh, spin up said Rails server. And you'll notice it gives us a nice little URL to hit. And upon going there, we see there is an unknown database for cheat codes. So let me just cancel that server. Quick rake command, db setup. Rake is a subset of Rails. DB setup uh, is specifying to set up the database. It's gonna yell at me a little bit and say, hey, something's going wrong. You should do a migrate first. But that's fine. You actually can't do the migrate until you do the setup. It's weird, you gotta set it up, migrate, and then set it up again. And this time it'll go through and creates the initial tables, which makes the database, which then makes us start the server. And here we are. We have a Rails welcome screen and we are up and running with Rails with just a couple hiccups along the way. I'm gonna leave those in there just to kind of show you when things go wrong, don't worry too much. Moving forward, there's gonna be a lot more stuff, but we're gonna progress with this cheat codes application. So if you wanna follow along line by line, go for it.